Okay, so we're recording. Hi, uh, my name is Alex. Um, I just came out from a uh, religious cult named Xinchenji. So I didn't know about this cult until today that I Google online. And then the person, the instructor who was teaching me about their theology and all their biblical doctrines didn't, never told me what is you know their church and what is their doctrines from. I basically just googled all the keywords and doctrines online and then they find out this, this religious cult based in South Korea named Xinchenji might have some connection with the Bible study I'm, I'm in. So I did confront with her and eventually she told me that yes, she is from this notorious definitely in her definition that's not notorious that's they're doing the work of god and i just want to share my experience with you if um, there are many of you that have been deceived by this religious group which is really subtle form and they reach out to people as um you know a bible study group they never told you what is their studies about and they just say we want to systematically study the bible and then people at the very beginning really it really uh, it's really appealing to people um because they would you would um, they would reach out to people usually in bookstore in churches and even in other bible study seminaries um even in theological seminaries and bible colleges they will reach out to people that are already studying bible they will find people who are diligent and those people um unfortunately i was um i'm at a well I, I think i should better share my experience um i i was i was in a earlier in this year around april i was in a bookstore and i met a, a girl she's her i'll just say her name is a so a approached to me and she she saw me i'm just picking up a theology book i'm kind of nerdy person <laughs> and she just uh randomly asked me some questions you know i'm a christian of course yes and what i'm currently studying and what is my favorite book in bible i did tell her my favorite book is uh, uh romans and then she kind of asked me if I'm interested to study uh, theology with her. Um, they have a group study that they have. It's a Bible study. It's like a group form that everybody can talk and share. And I said, yeah. Um, so I give her my information, my email, and how she can reach out to me through phone. And then when I got home and second day, she did reach out to me and she said, um, uh, she said there is a location that in the library that we can meet on sunday so when they're on sunday she was there and also the other lady um claimed to be her friend i assume she's a new member because whatever she said in the email gave me that impression and then the teacher came and i'll call her miss m and miss m came and she's a korean lady so there's still two other ladies there and then we started and she started to say she wanted to teach systematically teach the bible so she started with um the character of god and uh, who is god and that was pretty sound doctrine i have to say she called the bible verses and we we're just turning bible pages and started to say let's just turn to let's say john 1 1 let's just turn to and this and that and she started to quote all the verses and people are just you know turning the bible pages like crazy and that was different because i've been to other bible studies nobody will uh, this sounds really like a, at the very beginning it sounds really like systematic systematic theology because that would put certain topics say well we're going to discuss the per the trini trinity say this is the topic and we're going to quote verses from bible and gradually lead to the doctrine of trinity how we uh, conclude a uh, god is a triune god um, i thought it was like that that was the first class it was pretty good 
And then I, I give very positive feedback and I say, well, I might need to, I might, I might going to come the second time. And I did the second time, but um, the other two ladies, they were um, not so consistent. And just A and me and her friend, and then her friend left sometimes later. And then just me and A. And I'm all gonna do a spoiler because A and her friend, both of them with who I thought are new members just like me, which are not. They're actually already attending Shinshinji churches and they just pretended to be a new member. Shocking, because when I know this, I was like, whoa, if this is something good, you wouldn't lie to people to kind of, you know, seduce people to join the Bible study group. I mean, anybody would use lie and to you know, drag people to come to their group. That's not something they are not doing the work of God because the work of God, like Apostle Paul said, there's no malice and there's no deception. Then you shouldn't do this. Even Jesus said you should be shrewded as serpent, but doesn't mean you're gonna go lie to people and you also need to be innocent as a dove. And, um, then the study went well pretty good so it's been almost almost five months we basically go through at least say two sometimes three meetings in a week and the meetings last two hours good two hours and we discuss basically the figurative languages in the very beginning i was feeling well i didn't learn a lot of stuff because when i would read a book and read say certain chapter in, in bible I would have connected just something within this book and I would never thought about say um, in Matthew and Jesus talking about the seed and then thing in other book and Jesus also talking about seed and then I did compare it but I wouldn't go to other books because you know this is what Jesus is talking about so I would only connect it to what Jesus is talking about in other books I wouldn't talk go back to the Old Testament and examine what the seed means because for me and would think you know in certain different contexts that the, the thing will mean different like sometimes the um the seat means the word of god and sometimes it means something else but apparently that's not what they interpret bible they will say well the bible is a hidden message and it's written in parables um according to psalm 70 78 and um, it's a figurative language and jesus speaking figurative language and if you want to know the secret of the kingdom of God, you have to understand what is the figurative language of all this stuff. That makes sense, yeah, because yes, yeah, true. And Jesus himself said he's speaking figurative language. And then, then someday when um, Jesus will speak, God will speak plainly. But until then, all this, uh, the things are sealed. That's what the, what they claim. Everything is sealed. You're not able to know. Okay, I thought that's fine, and as long as you can tell me what is the secret, what is the interpretation of those words. So she started to explain uh, every single word. Basically, she just butchered the whole Bible. And uh, to one point that aroused my suspicion is when she's asking about when we're talking about the deity of Jesus Christ. And I kind of have a feeling that she doesn't really believe in Trinity. So then she said the Trinity is not in Bible. We don't really. I said, yes, that's true. And then there are a lot of stuff that there's not in Bible, but it doesn't mean the actual word is not in Bible. It doesn't mean the Bible is not teaching about the Trinity. Clearly in Bible, we can conclude that God is a triune God. That's exactly what we believe today. And, um, she would say, well, you believe in Trinity, you believe God sometimes is God, God the Father, sometimes is God the Son, sometimes is the Holy Spirit. I said, no, that's not what I believe. The biblical doctrine of Trinity is one God, monotheism, this is something nobody can uh, violate. And uh, the second thing is God is one God, but God also has three persons. There are three persons in this triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They have their distinctive, their distinct, their, um, how should I put this way? They are not each other. <laughs> the God is, Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit. And she would kind of compare that to modalism. Uh, she would say, well, the world believe, um, you know, God manifest in different ways. I said, that's the, not really what we believe as a triune God. So we kind of stumble on that question. 
and I kind of got a feeling about she's kind of attacking Jesus' deity. And then when I uh, when I uh, started to argue with her, I said, "Well, so you don't believe that Jesus is is if you don't believe Jesus is God, then who do you believe? Is Jesus just a creature like angels?" And she said, "No, no, that's not what I believe." And we didn't go deeper into this question because she kind of eventually she kind of agree with me, saying, "Okay, I thought you agree with what the world teaches about." Jesus Christ it just sometimes can be the Father, sometimes can be the Holy Spirit. Then we kind of just jumped over this topic, and I told her I was reading something from re the Reformed theologies. I I'm reading, following the teachers and following the Reformers' teaching, and those are really biblical stuff. And I'm reading John Calvin, and the moment she heard John Calvin, she was like, "No, she, John Calvin, that's the most evil man." I'm like, wow, this is just, uh, are you serious? And then she said John Calvin didn't put revelation in the kind of scripture, and John Calvin basically butchered a lot of people when he was in Geneva. Well, that was another story. I didn't want to get into the predestination debate, and I didn't even start that because I know it's been for centuries, people, among Christian denominations, people have been debating about predestination and free will. Well, I believe in predestination, and no, apparently I'm a Calvinism, and I wouldn't want to convince her about that. And we're not saved through believing Calvin, and he's just one of the great theologians. And we kind of move on from there. And then she started the class of teaching about the teacher of this world and teaching of men, and he, she started to kind of cut the world into two different. Uh, one is you know black and white. And she's the one that has the truth. She's the one that received the only source. Kind of sound really dogmatic. That's to a point I got kind of confused. I'm like, oh, hold on, just one second. Because she said the person that in the Revelation, in the book of Revelation, in Apostle John, is not actually Apostle John. That is a future role will be fulfilled by somebody come in the name of Jesus. And then I will feel okay if somebody comes in the name of Jesus and who that will be. I don't think anybody will come the end of the world unless <laughs> unless it's Jesus himself. And then she will quote she will quote the Bible saying Jesus said he came in the name of the Father and he's gonna send in his uh, comforter or helper or advocate counselor, different translations. And then I will feel okay. So yeah, that's already been fulfilled in Acts one and two when on the day of Pentecost and God sent His Holy Spirit uh, t to Jerusalem, and then people started to uh, talking uh, native languages, and then people got saved. Three thousand souls got saved. Yeah, that's been fulfilled. And then she will say, well, uh, Acts one and two. That's not basically the Holy Spirit, and. That is just the Old Testament fulfillment when God says in Joel,、um, He will pour out His Spirit. I'm like, yeah, that's true. God promised the Holy Spirit's work in the Old Testament, and God fulfilled it on the day of Pentecost. And that is the Comforter that come up in Jesus' name that Jesus promised in John 14 and 16. And clearly, Jesus said the other Comforter is talking about is the Holy Spirit. And I kind of have a feeling that she's trying to play something on the Holy Spirit, and unfortunately, people always do in this age.、Um, sorry, we're just so corrupted. But、um, the thing got me really alerted when she started to talk about there's a person already came on Earth that fulfills the role of John. And that's not the worst. The worst is that very person is representative of Jesus Christ, and that is something totally blew my mind. And she would say, "That is the Comforter, the promised Pastor already came on earth." So it's a shock. Then I told her, "Well, that means Jesus will return soon." And she said, "Yeah." 